Hey y'all, what's up? It's your girl Destiny Ariana and today I'm back with another video. And today the topic of this video will be the truth about my Bowdoin experience. So stop thinking about it. Can we just start it off? So the main reason why I wanted to speak about this um, is just because, you know, fall break starts today and it's also been a really, really, really stressful week. Um, and, you know, I just decided that I want to highlight some things that I've mentioned in other videos, but I haven't really gone in depth about um, that are really key to my bone experience and really understanding. And some students may go through this, some students may not, but I think that it's really important um, just to put it out there, put it in the air, and also, you know, let you guys know who may be looking at Bowdoin, some of the things that I may go through um, or other students may go through while they're here or just at any other predominantly white liberal arts school. Um, so, you know, if you wanna know more about the truth about my experience, stay tuned and keep watching. So this is crazy just because like this entire week I've been super stressed, it's been midterm season, papers after papers, assignments after assignments. Um, but one of the major things that's been bugging me this week is that I've been super, super, super homesick. You guys don't know, I am from um, Harlem, New York, and you know, coming from New York City to Maine is definitely a big jump. Homesickness is real, y'all. Like, I don't know what it is. My birthday is also in September, so I've spent every birthday with my family, and then, you know, I get to school and I'm away from my family. So that sort of hits really hard, like, end of September, early October, so I've been super homesick. But in speaking about the switch from New York to Brunswick, <sighs> It's just really hard when you go from a major city to somewhere that's like really suburban, but like basically like rural. Like I wouldn't say that Brunswick is rural. It's like a town-ish, whatever. Just coming from New York, it's like everything here literally closes at what, like seven, eight o'clock. Nothing stays open late. So in terms of that being something really major like it's a major switch you go from stores that are open for 24 hours to everything closing at eight um you go from having everything at your fingertips in terms of food in terms of um you know pharmacies beauty supply stores to not having that so i think that that was a major switch for me um and it was definitely something that took a lot to get used to. I mean, I tell you guys in other videos that I usually like go out to Portland to get somewhat of a city life, but I still don't even consider Portland to be really like a city. Um, and that's just because y'all, I, I come from New York City. Like there's nothing that compares to that. That's just my own personal experience. But um, I definitely thought that I should stress that, that, you know, if you're coming from a major city, getting to Brunswick is definitely going to be, or not, depending on what you really have access to, you know, like me, over the summers, I would travel to different places that had similar layouts, like New England. I was in up here in like Massachusetts all the time, like growing up. Um, So, I was sort of used to like this New England vibe, but growing up, being born and raised in New York City, it was still a major shock for me. But, you know, it became digestible because I had doses of that life my entire life, you know. So I definitely want to make sure I'm putting that out there for you guys because, you know, people who've never been to Maine won't really understand, you know, it gets really, oh my gosh, the cold. How could I forget to talk about the cold in Maine? Anyway, um, I'm from New York, so it gets really cold in New York, but you know, I thought I could handle that because it gets cold, right? No, Maine is a different type of cold, y'all. Like, I'm not even saying this, this video, <sighs> disclaimer, this video is not to steer you away from the school. It's just, I'm telling you guys these things because I don't know if people are telling them to you and I want to make sure that I'm being completely transparent. But anyway, the winters are really cold, so you have to make sure that you are packing accordingly especially if you come from a place that is really hot like california i have a bunch of friends who when they came here this is the first time that they had encounters with snow and it was really cute but it is so cold you want to make sure that you're layering you have your boots you have your warm winter coats when i say warm winter coats i mean the insulated insides like you don't just want a coat you need something that is literally going to turn your body into like a baked meal because it is cold and you want to be warm. So I think that that's enough about the transition from New York 
to me. Um, but the next thing that I'm going to speak about is going from a traditionally like black school to going to a predominantly white institution. So as you guys know, I've mentioned this in other videos, I went to a charter school in New York basically my entire life. And the demographics were mainly like students of color. So we had a lot of um, Latinx students, a lot of um, African American students and a lot of African students. Um, and that was basically my entire life you know like i come from a super black family um i live in harlem and then i went to a black school so as you guys can see i'm literally like marinated in blackness growing up and it was amazing it was great so imagine taking that marinated little melanated new york city girl and putting her in maine maine is a very white state so honestly it was something that didn't really hit me abruptly like I wasn't completely stirred off from it because like I said um in the previous point um I've been used to interacting with other types of people you know like um my school did a lot of outreach programs so I went to other summer institutions um while I was in high school so I got to interact with other people and practice really um integrating myself into different communities also like throughout the summer I work with different people so I kind of accumulated those skills over time but you know going from a really black school to a really white school is definitely something that I don't think should be like swept under the rug because it's different for some people you know at me it hits me at different times um sometimes I'm just like wow like I really go to a very white school in a very white state and like I need to go back home just to like rejuvenate myself you know because sometimes being in that space and being in that community it could feel really draining um and I wouldn't even say that that necessarily like steers me off because the reason why I'm here is to prepare me for the future um and i know that the spaces that i want to navigate especially like wanting to be a professor i'm going to be going into academia and that is a very whitewash place you know so i want to make sure that i'm mentally preparing myself and getting the skills to be able to interact with different people and interact and be able to navigate the white spaces that i'll be navigating um in a couple years like going into my graduate studies and all those things so there it is a big 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 culture shock you know but you can do it like i'm here doing it there are communities i talk about this all the time there are different ways and different um i wouldn't say solutions because you know there's still a lot of work to be done but there are definitely ways that you can make this experience you know um how do i say it? i don't want to say survivable because that sounds terrible but i think that's the only word that i can say right now is that you find communities you find friends you find people who make this experience great for you you know like it's not a terrible thing you know to find a community where you feel safe to find friends that make you feel at home you know it's gonna be different it's definitely something that i wanted to speak about because um you know i don't traditionally speak about it a lot but i thought especially after having a hard week these are some of the things that i think about some of the things that shape how i feel um on campus and i try to be completely transparent with you guys in every video so i thought that this is the perfect opportunity to do so. The next thing that I guess I'll speak about is academic level. As you guys know, I went to a charter school um, and now I'm basically at the number six liberal arts college in the US. So um, I basically feel like there were some ways in which I was prepared for Bowdoin academically, but then there were a lot of ways in which I wasn't prepared for Bowdoin academically. Um, I definitely think that in terms of so I took IB in school so um let me give you guys a little rundown of my high school experience so my first two years you know I took regular classes because I couldn't really get into advanced placement classes because they didn't really have them but my junior and senior year I enrolled into the IB program so I enrolled in IB courses which my school considered to be like advanced placement um which is not really AP, like they're still IP, but they were on the level in terms of like being advanced courses. Um, so basically that was my only encounter with taking classes that were academically rigorous and really like pushing me towards what I'd be experiencing on the college level. Um, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for the amount of work that I get here at my school. So 
literally like the papers that I wrote in high school I was probably finishing in like the night of you know the day before I wasn't getting that much reading in high school like I could just do it during class I could do it and I don't really remember struggling to do my high school assignments maybe it's just because high school is a blur now but I don't remember struggling to do them um that being said I got to Bowdoin and literally everything went out the window. Like I thought I was a great writer. I talk about this in a lot of videos, but I thought I was a great writer. A lot of professors have lowered my ego and I know I have a lot of work to be done. Like I still have great ideas, but there are still a lot of things that I have to work on, you know? And I think that that's something to be said that sometimes we don't come from those backgrounds that give us amazing academic training that allow us to be fluent in writing and, you know, it's just a lot to sort of feel like you weren't academically prepared for the institution that you're at and I don't know if this is the reality for other students but it's the reality for me like even now I got a paperback and they're like you're vague you know you're not concise enough you know you have ideas but they're not developing the way they need to be and it's like so hard sometimes when I really feel like yo how am I going to get better? I have this thing that I've been being trained to do for years and years and it I feel like it's holding me back sometimes, you know? And that's been something that's been affecting me all week and trying to break those habits and getting those resources, you know? So I find myself a lot going to the CRT, which is the Center for Learning and Teaching, um, and CLT, sorry. Um, basically, I go there and I get a writing assistant and I work with people to work on my writing skills. but. It is a lot like it's not something that's necessarily easy when you have to schedule appointments to get help all the time or struggle through papers and start them early and continuously go through rewriting and rewriting and having someone read it and rewrite it again like it's a long hard process but it's something that I think is worth it because I want to grow as a writer um but I definitely think that that should be said like acknowledging the fact that I feel like my school didn't academically train me to be prepared for a Bowdoin level um institution you know so i actually don't think that i've mentioned that on youtube um but there it is um and i hope that you know if one of you guys are going through this that you know we can work hard together i'm here i'm doing it like i'm striving and we're getting better you know i see improvement so that's all that matters is that we're pushing forward and we're not seeing the same um so another thing that's been hitting me is being a first gen so I'm a first gen here at Bowdoin, which means that uh, my parents and my siblings also didn't go to college. So I'm the first one in my family to go to um, college. And, you know, it has its benefits, but it also has its um, cons at the same time. But I feel like those are more psychological. Benefits wise, um, you know, it's really good to have your siblings look up to you and have them really rooting for you and have your parents be so happy for all your accomplishments, you know. But at the same time, being a first gen puts a lot of limitations on what you know, because since your parents or your siblings don't have that knowledge of what college is like, you feel like you're sort of like, you're the person in front of the line in a dark tunnel with the flashlight. So you're basically like going out there and you have to be courageous. You have to take that step and you basically are guiding everyone else. You know, like when I find out things about financial aid, I'm finding them out for my parents, you know, because we don't have that access and we don't know that. Um, so I think that that's something that definitely affects my experience, you know, especially with going to the financial aid office. I have to practice going to them myself to figure things out so I can translate that to my parents. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because it's teaching me responsibility. But at the same time, it is something that not a lot of other um, families here, especially being a predominantly white school and a lot of the kids um, having money and like being on full tuition, a lot of them come from wealth and are aware of these things, you know, like this is something that isn't new to them. They're probably like fifth generation college student or even third generation Bowdoin um, student. So it's like not having that knowledge at times, you know, you feel like you may be missing out on things and not really knowing information. And everything is not really clear to you. But Bowdoin definitely has different things that are first first gens. Like we have first gen dinners where you can meet with other students. We have resources um to help with that and help with that uncomfortability that it may bring but i've never really spoken about that experience either um but there are definitely times where i feel like i'm figuring everything out on my own um just because sometimes it's like that but it's also teaching me independence so i don't always see it as a bad thing i try to look in the good in things but it's also just really great because i get to be that role model for you know my siblings growing up 
um, I get to make my parents proud and I get to show them that all their hard work, you know, is, is showing in me. And I'm here because they allowed me to be here, you know, like, I think that it's, it definitely has its pros and cons, but I see it as something that's really preparing me and making me better for the future. And I'm starting this journey of having, you know, college students produced out of my family. So I definitely think that there's a lot of pressure that goes on with your mental at the same time because you're like, oh my goodness, like I don't want to let them down. I don't want to let myself down and that gets to you. But I think you just have to recenter yourself and really understand why you're doing it. And I think that definitely helps a lot. So those were a few things that um, I thought I definitely wanted to speak a little more about. Um, I can still go into this because there are a lot of things that I'm dissecting out of my Boone experience that I wouldn't normally speak about because they're not things that immediately come to my head. Like I'm always thinking about ways to help you guys and encourage you guys. But you know, going to college is not always easy and it hasn't always been the best. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that. This has been a rocky road and we're going through it. We're thriving, we're in year three and we're almost about to be out of here. And I'm just trying to give you guys the best and like the most transparent information as possible. So I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. It's me being completely raw with you guys. Um, and just talking about my experiences here, even if they aren't the best ones or even if they're things that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys on the next one. I can see it